Okay, so we're going to have a look at different uses of global variables and different ways that you can use variables within your question. So we're going to move on to a slightly more advanced question from example one. If you haven't seen example one, maybe you can go back and look at that video. But I'm assuming now you have a little bit of understanding about how formula questions work. So in this question, I'm asking fill in the blanks for the combustion of butane. So they're expected to know the formula for butane C4H10 and then to be able to calculate how much oxygen will be needed to produce how many carbon dioxides and how many molecules of water. So basically there are just five different answers they need to put in there. So let's see how I've written this question. And then in this question we're limited only to butane, but I'll show you how you can automate for it to be any of a number of different things. So let's have a look at this question and we'll see everything we expect to see. So our main question test, fill in, text, uh, fill in the blanks. And then in part one, we have our answer set out. So before we get into what's actually going down he here, we can see I have space for one, two, three, four, five answers. There's no particular reason I have them in that order, except for the way that I sequentially developed the question. So there are five different variables and the answer for those are answer one, two, three, four, and five. Well, what are these letters and where do they come from? Let's go back to our variables. And you'll see here that I have said C is equal to four or four or four, because this question is only for butane. So C is a random variable, except in this case, it's not random and it's equal to four. And there's a very good reason that I have set C as our random variable and then kept the rest as global variables. But these are all variables that are available to all of these questions. So you can either, as we did in the first example, put them into the text. If I wanted to, I could replace answer number two there with um, H, I think. Uh, no, H, uh, O, B, with B. I could replace number two there with B and it would put the number in ahead of time. So that would be fine. Um, and let's have a look at that. But if I'm going to put this in here, I'm going to have to take it out of here, in which case I'm going to have to change the numbering on this and the numbering on this. But let's make that edit and just see what it does. So we'll save our changes and we'll continue editing. And then if we preview, we can see that it's automatically put in the five for the five H2O that you need when you combust butane. That's uh, taking us backwards though, but it's just showing you what the variables are doing and how we can use them like we did in the last point, part, or we can use them as answers. So let's undo all of that. That's back to the answer three. That's being back to being answer four. This is answer two. And those numbers just refer to the order that they appear up here. They don't actually refer to where they appear in the question. But we're back to where we started. So. If we go up to our variables, we'll see that our random variable is C, and then all of the rest of our variables are calculated with respect to C. So delete that for now, because we don't need that yet. So our value will C in this case is equal to four, and then the number of hydrogens is twice C plus two. The number of oxygens is C plus H, which we've already calculated up here, divided by four. A, which is the amount of carbon dioxide is equal to C, and B is equal to the number of hydrogens divided by two. So these are already calculated. And then what we're doing is we're assessing these against the numbers that are put in. I've left a relative error at 0 0.01 because students are only gonna give integers, so it doesn't make a difference. But you can see there, what we're doing is using global variables to pre-calculate our answers. And then we can put in one, two, three, four, five. That's not so useful in and of itself though, because we could easily create a numerical question, maybe not with so many parts, but we could easily create a numerical question to ask those answers. So let's move on to a more in-depth use of global variables. So we will save the changes to that and we'll move on to our slightly more advanced version of this question. So in this case, if we preview this question, we can see that it brings me up hexane or it brings me up any random alkane, and if we fill in the correct responses, we'll see that it's expecting the numbers that correspond to hexane. If we start again and we pull up a different one, 
we can see this time it's expecting the numbers sorry filling the correct responses this time it's expecting the numbers that correspond to butane so how have we managed to do that because now we have a question that has infinite variation or a near infinite variation depending on what we want to do so let's have a look at how we wrote that question and you can see that it's essentially the same as the question we had before so part one the same five answer variables the same five answers and all that i've done instead is i've said that c can be any number from one to seven so i didn't go all the way out to decane you can it makes no difference and down here i have one more variable which is a variable i've called n and in n i'm asking to pick so pick is a function and it will operate the function inside the brackets so pick c minus one which it's going to compute to be whatever number c we've picked minus one so if we pick one for methane this is going to pick choice number zero out of all of the subsequent choices so if c is zero sorry if c is one it's going to pick choice zero which will be meth and we will end up with methane choice two would be ethane propane and so on and so forth so it's possible to both change the answers you expect but also the text of your question depending on how you set up your question okay i hope that makes sense uh, if you have any questions you can post them below if you want examples of these questions you can post a comment or uh, send me an email and i will send you on the questions and you can import them into your own moodle to edit with them uh, or to edit them um, or again the guys in moodleformulas.org who created these questions uh, quite helpful so in the next video we're going to move on and look at grading criteria so that's different ways that we can evaluate these answers that aren't simply just checking does it match another number inside the question so we can have a look at all sorts of different possibilities and from there we'll then be able to evaluate one answer with respect to another answer all right thanks